What's going on Legionnaires and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, and make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content we have coming out. Now I know usually on the weekends we're covering some awesome indie comics, but I really wanted to get caught up on this Batman line. So for this video, we're going to be covering the Infinite Frontier Batman issue number 107. And be sure to stay all the way through to the end of this video because there is some ghost maker in the back that is always tons of fun to check out. Now right now, Batman has been going through a lot. He has lost most of his fortune and now he is battling some kind of new gang that is in the city that is going by the name of Unsanity Collective. Now this is written by James Tinian, pencils is by George Jimenez, and Ricardo Ortez. Inks are the same and it is colored by Tomi Mori. Now with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright guys, so as we jump into issue number 107, we're picking up with Batman in present day. Because right now in present day, Batman is tied to a chair and we have Scarecrow running some kind of experiments on him. Injecting him with obviously some kind of fear toxin because that's, that's Scarecrow's little kink he's got going on. And right now, Batman is doing his best to fight off this toxin. To fight off whatever Scarecrow is trying to do to him. And the only thing ke keeping him on the brink of sanity right now is trying to remember how he got captured, how all of this began. And that's what will bring us to where the last issue left off, inside the mayor's mansion, where there is a scarecrow left there to kind of scare the mayor, or at least that's what it appears to be. And that's what will bring us to the past, with Batman showing up at the mayor's mansion to do his investigation to figure out exactly what happened. Now, while Batman is sneaking around this house trying to trying to get to the spot where he needs to do his investigation on the news we hear the hysteria about this mr wiz the individual who is in charge of the unsanity collective now this collective up to this point has been blaming the attack on arkham asylum on the government saying that the government did this and they did it to cause hysteria to cause panic and to cause fear. And so right now, this entire city is on edge. It could be on the brink of yet another giant explosion, hypothetically. You know, they just got done with Bane and the Joker War and everything else. This city financially couldn't take another hit, not from another crazy game. But the biggest thing that people are fearing right now is that what happened at Arkham Asylum, that was only the beginning of what would happen, of what comes next. So as Batman starts to examine this Scarecrow, he recognizes that there is no fear toxin on this. There's no residue or anything of that nature, which means this was placed here to see how much fear it could really strike into people's hearts without using the fear toxin. At least that's Batman's hypothesis on this so far. And so more or less, this is a fear attack that doesn't need the toxin. And panic is the entire purpose of placing this scarecrow in the mayor's house. But as Batman is continuing up his investigation, this is when the police sneak up behind him, which I don't understand how the police sn snuck up on Batman, but we'll let it go for the sake of the story. Renee Montoya is behind him with a bunch of her police officers, and they tell him not to touch anything else, that he needs to leave this place. Renee's giving him the opportunity to walk away, and Renee lets him know that the mayor, he doesn't want any vigilantes working on this case. It, w it wants to be straight up police work. Because right now, the Gotham City Police Department, they need the win. They need to show the people that they can defend them, that they don't need the magistrate, that they don't need peacekeepers, that they don't need Batman. And right now, she is under strict orders. If Batman does not leave, they are ordered to arrest him. Now, Batman being Batman tries to give her a little bit of information, tries to let her know that someone is trying to push him into a corner, trying to push the mayor into a corner. And the whole goal is to try to make him react, to make him act on something that somebody wants. And with that, he throws down a flash bomb and he is out of there in an instant, only leaving behind some smoke and some really ticked off police officers. Now, in these storylines, we've seen we seen a little bit of Harley Quinn popping in here and there, and th this is one of those instances. We see her pop in to deal with an escaped inmate from Arkham Asylum. That inmate being Benji Fink. 
going by the name currently Stabo. He has broken out of the Arkham Asylum and he has gone on a stabbing spree, stabbing people all up and down this place. Now Harley, she comes up, gives him a good knock to stop him from doing this because she's trying to be a hero. She's trying to be Batman's sidekick, or at least that's what she's calling herself. But while she's dealing with Stabo, this is when she has a police officer come up and tell her to put her arms up. Has her at gunpoint and Harley, you know, being Harley Quinn, turns around and hits this dude in the head with a bat. Kind of being more reactionary to her old impulses, not realizing that there are a bunch of police officers standing right behind him, all calling on him for backup, saying that now Harley Quinn is an associate and accomplice of Stabo. And so she's in a real tight predicament right here, but this is where we see Ghostmaker pop in, throw some smoke, and be able to get Harley Quinn out of there without being detected. But that's what will bring us to the Clock Tower. Now, up in the Clock Tower, we have Batman and Oracle having a conversation. Because right now, things are getting pretty bad in Gotham City. And Oracle, they've been working on some new bat signals. A way to keep in touch with Batman that doesn't require radios. And so what she's going to do is have Cass and Steph plant them, about 12 of them, on rooftops all around the city. And the signal won't come up from the same rooftop twice. And they'll remove it after a single use. And so they'll have a signal go up. He goes and meets up with a Gordon on a rooftop on some weird building, like always, and find out about the crisis of the day. Now, Batman, he loves this idea. He thinks it's a great idea, but this is where he divulges what he has been up to for today. Because after he left the mayor's mansion, he went to the ruins of Arkham to try to find out what he could find there. And he reviewed that the surviving security footage from the days leading up to the attack. A man who looked just like Jonathan Crane died in that attack inside of Crane's cell. But after Batman had examined the body in the morgue, it was prosthetics on a double body. And so it's looking more and more that either Jonathan Crane or somebody was helping him escape. It looks like Jonathan Crane had been out of Arkham Asylum for quite some time. So it is quite possible this Scarecrow is the one behind what happened inside of Arkham Asylum. To try to make it look like, like Jonathan Crane had died inside of that. And he's starting to piece a lot of this together. Trying to figure out exactly what Scarecrow is after. He knows that there's going to be more of these Scarecrows popping up. They're not going to be filled with fear toxin or anything like that. He's trying to see how far he can push the entire city to its breaking point without using any kind of chemicals in play. But there is still a large piece of this puzzle the Batman is missing. And he feels like the Unsanity Collective, he feels like they have something to do with this. He feels like somehow they are at the root of this. Because over the last few days, they have robbed some of the biggest media corporations inside of Gotham City. And so it appears that they are here also at play trying to drive the city into some kind of frenzy. Now the issue is Batman, he needs to get close to these guys. And no one has been able to do that. Anytime cops come around, anytime anybody comes around, these guys scatter like cockroaches. So Batman is going to have to do something he hasn't done in quite a while. Batman is going to have to go undercover and try to join the collective. And that's what will bring us to Midtown. Now, currently in Midtown, we have Mr. Saint working a late night. And as he's working, his assistant comes in and lets him know that he has been cordially invited to a ceremony to honor Sean Mahoney. Now, we know this guy to be peacekeeper number one. The guy who quote unquote kills Batman in the future state event. But this is still in the early stages. So Mr. Saint is still eyeballing this guy for the role. To see if he would be the sufficient candidate to be able to take up the mantle of peacekeeper number one. And be able to do what actually needs to be done. But this is when he hears a voice. Hearing this voice he dismisses his assistant, tells her to, you know, take the rest of the night off. And as he gets up, walking over to the window, he peers outside, only to see on the opposite side, on another building, there is Scarecrow. And Scarecrow is letting him know that the fear in this city is catching on. And right now, it is spreading like a virus through the city, 
through the people of Gotham. And Scarecrow tells him that they need to speed up their process, speed it up for the next experiment. They need to kick it into the next phase before they face any more interference. And that means some people are going to die and Mr. Saint, he's going to have to deal with that if he truly wants to be able to build his magistrate and save Gotham City. And so it appears up to this point that Mr. Saint, with the best of intentions, is trying to save Gotham City, thinking that the magistrate is the best course of action, but he's doing it through evil means. He's working with extremely bad people like Scarecrow to be able to push this forward. But that's what will bring us to the Narrows. And skulking through these alleyways, we have a disguised Bruce Wayne making his way to a secret door. A door guarded by a man. And we have Bruce Wayne looking goofy as all heck, walking up to this man and telling him that he wants to join the Unsanity Collective. And that he wants an audience with Master Wise. But that's what will take us to the Ghostmaker part of this issue. Picking up on the Ghost Stream, Ghostmaker is getting done with some, some extracurricular activities, we'll call them, and his partner's in the bed not wanting him to leave, wanting him to come back and have some fun, but he lets him know that he's got a mission to do, he's got things to do, but they can eat up all the food they want, they're more than welcome to hang out for a little bit, so on and so forth. And this is where we hear Icon update him on what's going on. He was cutting it close, he's only got like, two minutes until his drop zone and so with such little time we see Ghostmaker suit up and get ready to get going now while he's getting suited up icon is letting him know that there are some kind of strange readings coming from this place weapons that the computer system can't quite decipher but the ghost stream has also confirmed that the dna signatures of five of his key adversaries are on this island. This is an addition to the surveillance five times more advanced than what's on the ghost net. So they will be able to track his movements from the moment he lands on the island. But Ghostmaker, he always loves himself a good challenge, so this is nothing that it would deter him. And with that, he jumps out. And the place that he is landing is Devil Skull Island. And this is where we see Madame Midas the richest person in the world. Now her ancestors, they were among the first merchants who founded the East India Trading Company. Since the dawn of the modern era, her family has been in every piece of illicit business transactions that touch the Pacific and Indian Oceans. This woman is earning a million dollars every 30 seconds. All of the American superheroes, they have no clue of her existence because she wishes to keep it that way. She has always, always maintained staying invisible. But then her hand is forced because she keeps losing shipments to one individual. That individual being none other than Ghostmaker. And as of this morning, the vigilante has costed her roughly $118 billion in losses. And this is really starting to hurt her business because now people are scared of Ghostmaker. They're scared of his retribution. They're scared to come across him. So a lot of them are backing out of these deals. And so she hired Instigator and Razorline. Brainstorm and Kid Kawi. She brought all of these individuals in to try to figure out how they can defeat Ghostmaker. Because all these individuals have gone up against him and they have lived to tell the tale. And so she has gathered all of them here to pick their brains for information. Because she wants to kill Ghostmaker herself. And Brainstorm tells him, like, you know, what I want to know is how you plan on killing him when the rest of us has failed. Not only that, but no one knows where to find Ghostmaker. No one knows where his base of operations is. No one knows his true identity. He is literally a ghost to them. You know, most of the world doesn't even know that he exists. So how could they possibly find him, let alone be able to hurt him? But this is when Madam lets them know that they don't need to find him. Because she leaked the location of where all of them are. Of their location of where they're sitting right this second. Which means the Ghostmaker is coming 
to Devil Skull Island right now. Now, the instigator, he is absolutely livid right now. But she pulls out her gun laced with poison and tells everyone they need to sit down and listen to her. Because yes, while he is coming, he will have to overcome many, many obstacles before he reaches them. So... If anything, he is dinner entertainment. All while they sit here and deliberate the best way to take out this man. And this is where they see like a little hologram projecting showing Ghostmaker arriving on the island and getting ready to make way to take them out. Now, as he's checking out the geography of this place, figuring out exactly what route he wants to take, this is when he gets an alert. An alert that there is something within his proximity. That something being freaking robot tigers. Not only are these robotic tigers, but these tigers also shoot lasers from their freaking eyes. Now, right now, Icon is freaking out. Doesn't think that he will be able to withstand the heat from these laser blasts. But he, he tells Icon, like, I programmed you to have fear because I don't have any. But I'm going to handle this situation. I've been waiting for a good challenge. I've been waiting for a good surprise. And this looks just like a challenge worthy of Ghostmaker. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. You know, like I have said a hundred times about these Batman runs, I am thoroughly enjoying these Batman runs. They're, they're a lot of fun. The interconnectivity of them, as well as the ability to stand alone and tell these individual stories that all build up to what is Future State. To what led Batman to eventually being killed and being resurrected and then going underground. You know, ever since I, I started Future State, I've been extremely curious on how the Magistrate was able to get a grip on on Gotham City while Batman was still around. And right now, that's exactly what we're seeing. We're seeing the groundwork being laid for the Magistrate to be able to come in and be their dictator-like selves. And they're doing that with the help of Scarecrow. Without even using a fear toxin or fear gas, they are terrifying the entire populace. But yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you have not yet, do me a favor and hit that sub button. Hit that notification bell. Make sure you don't miss any of the awesome content we have coming out. And until the next video.